Yo, what up? Um, first, I'm gonna start with a warning. I'm recording this through my phone with an app, so the quality may suck. Um, I could talk about what things I'm looking for at Tekken 8, but that's that's not important. Let's just skip that and get straight to the main topic. There are two points I'm not cool with when it comes to Tekken 8. For the first example, I have to bring in Tekken 7 as a comparison so you know where, where we're going at. In Tekken 7, I'm a Jin main. Let's get a bit, little bit nerdy. I'm a Jin main, and I'm going to start with FF3, right? So I'm going to start with FF3. Then I'm going to go into back 3, Zen 1. Back 4, 2, 3, Zen 3. Tailspin, dash. Back 3, Zen 1, 3. High wall splat. Now, depending on the situation, meaning uh, is it a regular wall, balcony, Floor break, uh, floor break stage, whatever. I have different options, but I already know what options those are. For for a regular wall, I'm gonna just probably go for jab into savage sword, down back to the three, um, or a laser gazer. Um, after a balcony break, I don't get that much. I can dash up to do down forward four into down two. Then G Corp shit, a uh, wall break into another wall, probably back to one into one, two, or maximum three hits. Same for floor break. Floor broken with down two or something, back to one for another wall, and then down back to two, three, or whatever, right? So you see, depending on what I started with and what type of wall I got, I can already calculate into what I'm going to get at, at the end, right? That's no longer the case in Tekken 8. Because no matter how many times you lab it, there's so many possibilities, so many factors to consider that you will not get. You're actually lucky if you exactly get what you want. For example, if I dash up and I'm just a millisecond too late, something like this could happen at the wall. I'm going to go with Savage Sword, down back to 2-3. Now, the first hit connects, the second one whiffs, and by the time I do the third move, my opponent tag rolled, I whiff the last kick, so I'm getting launch punished. That's not a situation you want to be in, so you go for something that is safer like CD1. That shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't minimize your combo just to end up in a safer situation. That's BS. But I don't think, I, I think this change is necessary. They have to tone down all these janky options just so players have an easier way to calculate into what they want to get. But as I just mentioned, I don't, I don't think that they are going to do that, sadly. So, and the second point is heat. I, a lot of what I'm going to say right now, I already explained in my previous video about in my heat rant. But I just have to repeat it again so, so you know where this is going. So, Tekken 8, the, the core game plan exists in, in, in a room of those two elements. Um, the first thing is the force 50-50, and that's basically everywhere, no matter the situation. The second one is heat, and now heat got nerfed. Recap again, heat is only good for three situations for two mechanics of heat. The, the last mechanic that you absolutely don't need or shouldn't use, no matter the case, is the heat dash, right? Uh, the second best option is the heat smash, as at the wall you can get something like a balcony break, wall break, uh, wall burst, or something, right? And the best option, the, the, the best mechanic out of those three, is the heat burst. Because first, you can, you can use that as an extension for your combo where any regular move would not hit or convert into something further, or as a I want to get out of the situation tool, like a power crush, a really good power crush, right? But now that heat got nerfed and it's no longer that broken, and I completely understand why, um, is that not only is there less, less room 
to to lab with and that was actually really fun but the thing is now that it's gone there is a, like a void a gap that it's not filled and every time you will play this game you will have the feeling like there is something missing there so now how do we solve this situation right how do we implement something that that fills the gap without making heat as broken as it was before and my solution to that is bring back the heat chain because if you got two heat chains, well, let, let's, go, let's go at it like this. Usually when you play Tekken 8 right now, your opponent is like, yeah, okay, whatever. He got one, one out of jail card or something, right? He can escape a situation, convert a situation once in a round, whatever. I don't care. But if you got two heat chains, that's already enough mental pressure to make your opponent think about even before the match starts. Where is he going to use this heat resource? And everything that I just mentioned, where those situations where heat is good at, you can now use twice in a round. And that's powerful enough to make heat relevant again, while not making it as broken as it was before. That would be my perfect solution for this, right? But I'm 100% sure that they are not going to do that. I mean, yes. Tekken 8 is going to have his seasons with DLC characters and, and mechanical changes and whatever. And there is probably a, a lot of stuff that is going to happen, but I don't think that they are going to um, change or make something about those points that I just mentioned, sadly. Yeah, but that's basically I, all I wanted to talk about. That's why I got mixed feelings about Tekken 8, because there are some good things, bad things. But if they actually would solve those two points, I'm going to be completely cool with that game.